What's up guys? Welcome to Exactly Gaming. My name is Zach and today we are back with more 60 parsecs. That's right, last time we left off we had sent Baby out to the dig site, we sent him with a shovel, a mask, and the vest, so hopefully he should be back safe and sound. Uh, and we got a... Megan started having nightmares from something called the Call of Cthulhu, which apparently was an old ad. But uh, in this episode, we're going to keep moving on and see if we can figure out the mysteries. We're also helping a group of prisoners rebuild their ship. That way, hopefully, we can make it off with them. Sir, I'm detecting an unusual disturbance in our mini-reactor. You see the membrane of light? Space-time itself tearing open. Figures are moving and speaking on the other side. Don't... Through... Exchange... Exotic matter or... What do we do? Offer something to attempt to communicate... Offer something or attempt to communicate? Hmm... See the membrane of light, okay, uh, space time itself tearing open, figures moving, speaking on the other side, don't through exchange exotic matter, don't put through or exchange exotic matter or risk something. Huh. Well, that sounds like, that sounds interesting. Don't, so don't try to do that. Let's just communicate and see what happens, because I think if we try to put exotic matter through, we, something really bad might happen. Day 40. All right. The space-time breach in the mini-reactor chamber was still bubbling when you pulled out your communicator. Just as you turned it on, a pair of arms wearing Astro Citizen patches reached out of the shimmer. One yanked the communicator away from you while the other shoved an Astro Citizen handbook into your chest. You tried to reach in, but the chair was already gone. Okay, so we got a book and lost a communicator. But we have a backup one, so we should be good. Baby completed a visit to the alien excavation. He appears a little knocked down in need of sustenance and traumatized, but the important thing is that he's not a corpse. You sit and listen as he begins to explain his excavation situation. Baby stepped on a booby trap and would have gotten skewered by that pair of sharpened stone udders, if not for his armor. Strangely, the cow statue who shot them was male. The armor cracked on impact. Baby found mineral veins deep in the tunnels. Someone left an old generator at the dig site. Baby siphoned plenty of power. Baby noticed a working communicator. Nicely done, Astro Citizen. Where does all this soup come from? It's the greatest mystery the universe and everything <laughs> of the universe and everything oh anyway baby is returned bearing soup that's all for now baby is safe oh wait there was an ancient machine in one of the tunnels that appeared to have made soup it was one million years old the soup captain what does that mean Megan is still your friend. All right. Our communications array has intercepted a number of transmissions that are referencing a crashed space vessel they might be referring to our ship hmm okay interesting so somebody's aware we're here Baby seems to be doing all right. He's tired, though. He'll get some rest. What can we craft in the meantime? Let's craft a lighter. We got plenty of soup. Let's make a lighter. You never know when you'll need it. Captain, there's an ancient monument nearby. My scanners indicate this site was previously occupied. Part of the structure seems to have been unearthed for a while. Whoever was here left in a hurry. There's still some equipment left. I think I can identify some tools down there in the excavation site. Care to have a look around and see if we can find anything useful, Captain? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. Well, well, let me just be like, nah. I don't really feel like it. Day 41, all right. You descended toward the bottom of the excavation site. It wasn't hard to see what spooked the previous occupants. At the base of the monument was a disturbing relief. Wait, a disturbing relief showing a flying creature made of pasta and meatballs. The horror. What's a re disturbing relief? At the base of the monument was a disturbing relief. Is that like a pain? I don't know. Educate me, guys. Leave me a comment. I'm I don't know what that means. Showing a flying creature made of pasta and meatballs. It means like a mural or like a picture? Is that like another word for it? The memory of that atrocity will follow for a long time, and unfortunately, there was little value left at the site. You stumbled upon a digging utensil of alien origin, but decided that your trusty shovel already does the job well enough to not be replaced. Megan assures you you can still count on her friendship. Baby assures you that you can still count on his friendship. Well, that's good. They're just like, hey, I'm still your friend, by the way, you know. Like, okay, sh I didn't think you weren't. Why are you saying this all the time? You tell me this every day. Hey, we got a lighter. You should eat something. Megan is starving. All right, so you get food. Her starving is like the subtlest. She just kind of bends forward slightly. Baby's starving as well. All right, upgrade. Whoa, we can upgrade a lot. We got a lot of good stuff. Um, let's see, what can we upgrade? Let's upgrade the cow thing since we're on this cow planet. News from the prisoners, Captain. The repairs of their vessel are going smoothly, but they need a battery to be able to progress further. It would be wise to help them since the ship is repaired. You might be able to board it and leave this planet. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Okay. End of the day. Everybody's eating. Day 42. Yesterday, you provided the prisoners with a spare battery, allowing them to complete another stage of the repairs of their ship. The prisoners are almost done with the repairs of their ship. It shouldn't take long before you can escape this planet with them. Just hang in there, Captain. You're still quite alert. You still feel hungry. Baby considers you his friend. Upgrade completed. Extraordinary artifact. Hell yeah. Now, I think we probably need power. That's probably the next thing they'll need. If there's one thing that's going to screw me over, it's power. While checking on the ship's exterior, you stumble upon something half-buried under the dirt. You, make a few, you take a few minutes to uncover it and find that it's apparently a can of soup. 
held in a stone hand. You can try to pull it out by force and probably damage the carving in the process, or leave it be and just spend some time examining it on the spot. Might be hard locating it later, though. The storms on this planet cover up things fast. <clears throat> let's use my genius intellect. And then let's see if we can upgrade. What can we upgrade? We're already upgrading that. What else is there to upgrade? Hmm, maybe the dig site, this thing would be good, but I also want to make sure that we still are exploring. Th I'm going to need power. I know that. So let's send Baby out to get power. <clears throat> Cave. What is this? That has power. No, that doesn't have power. Swamp doesn't have power. The canyon has power. Let's do it. Send Baby back to the canyon. Let's send him out and give him all the goodies. He needs all the goodies. Let's give him a gun. And give him the mask, right? Yeah. We'll give him the mask. <clears throat> Right, and that should be good, right? Yeah. All right, you go, baby. And find good things. Day 43. You decided that the uncovered can of soup you found next to our shuttle could be left unmolested. Or should be left unmolested. You did take a good look at it and the carving that held it in the place and the carving that held it in place before it got covered by the dirt again, though. You made it made you wonder about how even on this alien and uncaring world, you found something unfamiliar. Or familiar. Damn, I can't read today, guys. It filled you with a sense of calm, quiet welcome in your current circumstance. Baby left to deeper plumb what I'm calling Holy Cow Ravine. You should use some more rations. Or you could use some more rations. Alright, so let's see. I'm hungry, she's hungry, but I think we're okay. That's my new song. I'm hungry, she's hungry, but I think we're okay. Let's upgrade that communicator module just in case that's what they need as well. It shouldn't take too long. While we don't have an infinite supply of soup, we do have some old science equipment tucked away on various parts of the shuttle in case of emergency research. If you're willing to lose a can of soup, you could try to find a way to improve the formula. The label lists the ingredients as tomatoes, water, and salt. We could add anything and potentially create the most delicious soup in the galaxy. Just imagine the possibilities, Captain. Yeah, we're trying to soup for that. For taste of your soup, anything. It's been 43 days and all I've eaten is tomato soup. Yeah, I'll do anything to spice it up. Sadly, you're unable to improve the soup recipe in any significant way due to the absence of anything else edible on board. I guess you could have added more soup to that soup. And we lost it. All right. And he's starving, so we'll give him that. And hungry. All right. The prisoners are on the line again. They're still hard at work preparing their ship, and they desperately need some adhesive. Don't forget that their vessel may be your only ticket out of here. Oh, hell yeah. We got a roll of duct tape. Give it to him. And baby's hopefully going to get power, so should be okay there. All right. Day 45. Oh, did we do it? Did we do it? Did we make it? Let's see. Wait, what happened? Make a decision. What did we do? What happened? Is there anything to do? Whoa, oh no! What happened? What happened? Did, did it freeze? Did my game freeze? Hey, guys, I think it may have frozen. Oh my god. Oh wait. Yesterday, you provided the prisoners with a roll of duct tape. Thanks to your gift, they were able to considerably speed up the repairs of their vessel. Nice one, Captain. And that finally did it. The convict ship is fully repaired and ready to go. Now all you have to do is join the prisoners at their camp and get ready to chart a course across the stars. Your mission is over, Captain. Congratulations. Hey, did we do it? We did it! We actually won! Whoa! Look at that. That is awesome. What the hell? That is the coolest. I'm so happy. This is the coolest, yeah, this is amazing. We won. And so a small group of crashed astronauts, led by Captain Emmett Ellis, joined forces with a community of prisoners to repair the convict ship. As a humongous vessel rose off the ground, it was no longer a monument to bondage, but a chariot of freedom instead. While many of the ship's passengers never returned to their original homes, they made new ones all across the galaxy. And I love that it's like actually the crew that I had. Hell yeah. When she joined Astro Citizen, Megan didn't know a damn thing about atomic gadgets or love so powerful that would make a starving man share his soup ration with another. Throughout her adventures, she's seen it all, and more, with Emmett by her side. Captain Ellis was always kind to Baby, so he stuck around. The gentle giant became Emmett's trusted sidekick and valiant protector against threats both real and imagined. Empowered by his incredibly unexpected and successful career as Astro Citizen Captain, Emmett has found himself wondering what to do next. His brilliant mind was soon put to good use, and only a few short years later, an improved flavor of canned tomato soup was distributed in all the civilized galaxies. 
It seems like ages have passed since three amateur astronauts left Earth's orbit expecting certain doom. Now, the brave survivors look into the future with renewed optimism. As one tale comes close to a close, another begins. Wow, you survived! Hell yeah! Day survived 45. We did it! Soup consumed 25, first aid kits used 2, no sock puppets used, successful expeditions 5 out of 5, 6 out of 12 locations, so we'll definitely have to go back, items brought from expeditions 13, items crafted 19, items upgraded 2, and items recycled 0. Well, I hope you liked that one, guys. If you did, no, I'm not ending it there. We're still too early in the episode. Not ending it there. We are going to continue is what we're going to do. We're going to start and we're going to do Captain Tom. I recently got a suggestion saying, hey, try Captain Tom. And that's what we're going to do because he seems like he's a good captain, but actually he doesn't really have these. He seems like the kind of guy who like talks a big game and has an eye patch. And they even said that like they bet, they bet that his eye works. And I was like, yeah, I, be, I bet so. Your survival experience surviving your escape shuttle with randomly generated voyagers. Like, yeah, the full game experience. That's what we want. Captain Tom. Yeah, not really great at anything. But I bet I bet I'll do just fine. All right, let's start this. <clears throat> I'm excited. He probably can't carry as much. I remember the first time I did it. Whenever I use Baby, Baby can carry a lot. Like he can carry more than the other people, which I thought was really cool. So let's start. Let's start Captain Tom. Let's do a Captain Tom run here. All right. Starting. Okay, we already got some stuff. Already got some stuff. All right, let's go. Dump it in there. Come on. Got it. Dumped. All right. Nice. Gotta bring soup. Gotta bring soup. Gotta bring soup. And now we need supplies. We need materials and supplies. I definitely need a first aid kit. Definitely need baby. Damn it. Baby's too heavy. To the shuttle. All right. Come on. After this, we grab baby. Gotta have baby. And we got the mask. Nice. Nice. All right. Now we can worry about supplies. Oh, didn't drop it off. All right. We're good. We're good. Look at us. Look at us go. We're, we, we got this. We are professionals. I think I probably need Emmett too. Let's do the four person crew. Yep. Let's do it. Go, go, go. Captain Tom, go. All right, we made it. We made it. Whew. All right. I think we're, we'll, we'll be okay. I think that's that's decent enough. Got a lot of good supplies, a lot of soup, and I think we also have a full crew. So let's let's see how this goes. Captain Tom, not bad. Not bad there, Captain Tom. Liberté et égalité filénite. That's uh, that the... Liberty... Oh, God. I took French as well. I took two years of French. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's a legal eagle cat. That's what it means. <laughs> yeah, look at Captain Tom. Oh, wow. He's already got his little, yeah. He got his little fake soup can medal. Yeah, he's, he's going to be a great captain. <laughs> Check the star log first. Hi, Astro, Astro Computer as, uh, Assistant reporting for duty. You must be Tom, right? I'm pleased to announce that you have been randomly selected to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro Citizen Program, please accept our apologies for the tiny inconvenience of being relocated 60 parsecs away from Earth. Current objective, find a safe place to land, then try to contact the outside world. Please switch on the main computer for further instructions. It is located in the center of the shuttle. All right. Captain, this is your first day. we got to do our speech. What? Are, yeah, let's see how clever he is. Let's use that cleverness and see how good his speech is. Day two, all right. You knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove your worth as captain for the last human crew in the universe. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the captain, filled the cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, that would be it. All right, so pretty much same stuff. I wish I knew where you're pulling those spare cans from, Captain. Nice, all right. So we got some soup, eight. We got a lighter. We got a first aid kit. We got the mask, and we, okay, we got that. Okay, let's see. What can we do? Uh, nothing to upgrade. What can we build? <clears throat> let's build... Let's already build a communicator. Let's do that. And then we'll see what this is. Hello there, Captain. Might I ask why you're going through the files? You're really not meant to see the contents of my digital storage unit. Huh. Protox. Now that's a fun file. Just please don't... Oh no. What have you done? You shouldn't have ran the program. Protocol X initiated. That's a secret protocol. It was meant to be an experiment. The consequences of initiating the protocol will be severe. Use your skills to do something, Captain. Uh, yeah, the crew intelligence is brilliant, so let's go with that. Day three. All right, off to a, a 
wonderful start. Protocol X has been disabled. Captain, you were smart enough to hack the computer and stop the dangerous program from launching at the last moment. Phew. It pro I probably should have told you about Protocol X, Captain. It's an experimental program installed on the ship computer by the masterminds behind the Astro Citizen program. I'm not at liberty to divulge what it does exactly, but rest assured that it's a good thing you stopped it in time. You're still quite alert. All right. And we completed that. So now maybe let's see what else we can build. Um, yeah, let's build some, let's build a relic. Relics are always good. We found a small metal box in one of the compartments labeled To Cert, Do Open. You could take apart the lock and gather some elements from it, ignoring what's inside, or you could try to open it, which required deft fingers. Which will it be? Let's use that intelligence. Day four. All right. And we got a full crew of four this time, so soup's going to be a bigger deal. Tinkering with the box's lock did not pay off. You triggered its anti-tampering mechanism and heard a breaking sound within. The box's contents were destroyed. It made you and your crew incredibly frustrated. Nice, 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 nice. Love being frustrated. All right, let's start making soup. Hey, pick up that trash. Oh, people putting trash on the ground. Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crew well fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. I doubt we'll find any other useful rations here in space. Don't forget to keep a good inventory of your stock, unless you want to eat your own crewmates. Haha, <laughs> that was a joke. Please appreciate and laugh. Thank you for your cooperation. All right, yeah, let's let Emmett do it. He's brilliant. Emmett, you handle it. That's uh, The captain's going to delegate there. I feel like Tom's going to be real good at delegating. He's just going to kind of sit there. The routine supply check is now complete. Well, well, look at that. The numbers add up. Good job, human crew. The current number of soup cans on board is eight. Correction, the accurate tally is actually ten. Additional foodstuffs were delivered to the shuttle instead of the entertainment supplies. Lucky you. The food collected is more than sufficient for now. Just don't eat it all at once. Since Emmett did a good job, I think it's only fair to nominate him as your payload officer. In this role, Emmett will procure some minerals for you daily, as long as he respects you, Captain, anyway. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, minerals daily? Hell yeah. Payload. Yeah, that's badass. Well, we got to keep everybody doing well. Everyone's hungry, but okay. Let's build a duct tape. Captain, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was a success. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied into space. Packed full? Damn, it's been five days. How'd you guys fill an airlock with piss and shit? <laughs> the bad news is that the airlock hatch is jammed. If you don't fix it soon, our clogged toilet will quickly become an extinction level event. It's now or never, Captain. How will you save the human race? Oh, shit. I don't have tape. I was, I'm building tape right now. This is why I'm building tape. It's for all of our shit. Day six. Doing nothing about the airlock toilet was risky, Captain. Lucky for you, the door unjammed on its own. Eventually, probably because the odor buildup made it corrosive. Too bad all the health hazards it caused, but then again, it's a 100% human problem, which makes it 100% yours and exactly 0% mine. Now we have tape built. Everyone's hungry. Okay. Hoarder, science specialist, alert, and hungry. All right, what will we do? Let's craft... Yeah, let's go ahead and craft everything we can. Oh my gosh, you found a holographic chess set on board? You've never heard of holographic chess? It's like regular chess, but with a big round board, and your pieces are holographic monsters. Because it doesn't use physical pieces, I can totally play you. You'll have to input my moves, but just remember, I control the airflow to where you sleep at night. You better not cheat, is all I'm saying. Wanna play a game? Yeah, use that brilliance. No one's starving yet, so we're still good on food. Day seven. I can't believe you defeated me at holographic chess. How? The computer always wins. I know you had help from the crew. I'm tempted to turn the ship into a pile of smoking space junk, but good game. GG. Aside from having, uh, aside from me having the burning desire to kill you, the mood around here feels lighter, doesn't it? Everyone's in high spirits. I guess brutally crushing the soul of your beloved ship AI will do that, you traitors. All right, you're on alert. Everyone's starving. Yep, everyone eats. <clears throat> Boom. Nope, everyone eats, yeah. One day left for the thing, and then all we gotta do is start making soup. Ca there's... Can you hear me, Captain? Ugh, you say R in these situations, right? I hate raising my volume, but that malfunctioning body odor remover filter is making a racket. I think it's malfunctioning. Is that why it's malfunctioning? Is that why you said that? <laughs> Alright, let's use tape. Our trusty tape. Hopefully it doesn't break. Day 8. You fix the body odor removal filter by replacing the worn out screws with tape. The cabin no longer smells of unwashed astronauts. Everybody on board can think clear without that constant din drowning every thought. You're still very mentally stable. Crafting complete new items, sock puppet. Nice. Let's make some soup. Captain, we are now earning a field of cosmic gas. Its origin is unknown, though I have some theory. Uh oh. Can you smell that? Did somebody get to brush their teeth today? No, it's just that gas leaking in the shuttle. Somebody could try to isolate some of the gas to use later, avoiding the leak side effects. Uh, yeah, let's make. Genius Emmett do it. Captain's delegating that one. Big on delegating. <laughs> Day nine. All right. We're coming along nicely. 
Emmett did a great job containing the gas leaked inside the shuttle. He also succeeded in isolating enough of the gas for use to rework into a useful chemical. Smart. Uh, you could use some more rations, Captain. April keeps asking for soup. Baby's still loyal. Emmett's hungry. All right. Let's do craft soup. Hungry. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference, or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? Uh, yeah, she's... Yeah, do her, right? Uh, or no, Jean, I want Emmett. Emmett's a genius. I want him doing it. Emmett, you're doing it. You're the smartest one. I'm sorry, but I'm delegating. Day 10. First contact. Hey. Captain, you need to see this. I'm not as easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments of humanity and human-made AI alike. We're not alone in this universe. The signals we intercepted were finally decrypted. They are alien transmissions, coming from, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I don't mean the Reds, something I've never seen before. Seems to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. All right. One of these digital signatures is familiar, but the message itself is unclear. Perhaps when we get closer to the source, the transmission will clear up. The source is in outer space, at least a week from our current position. All right. Well, let's keep moving along then. Or ETA to that celestial body, or whatever it is, is T3. Might be his teeth. Okay. Let me just play the job. Interference is what seems a potential landing spot in our flight path. Okay. Nice. All right. T minus three. T minus three days? You just had a week. Captain, one of our non-critical subsystems is having a meltdown. The malfunction is serious, and the system won't talk to me. It has to be dealt with directly. If we don't do anything, the breakdown will spill a brain cell atrophy inducing coolant into our ventilation system. In other words, you better improvise a solution to this crisis. Um, use the communicator. We can build one. We have the technology. Day 11. Now oh, we broke the communicator. The malfunctioning subsystem decided to remain composed, but it might have wanted to talk to it might have not wanted to talk to me, but your use of the communicator to talk to its feelings did about its feelings did the trick. The situation is under control, but as you finish your pep talk, the communicator sparked and emitted some weird buzzing sounds. Navigation readings confirm still are headed to a toward potential landing site. ETA T minus two. Right, everyone's starving. Let's get everybody some food. Let's craft some food, first of all. Now let's get everybody food. Captain, our systems are working below their optimal levels. I was able to determine that our wiring might be at fault. I suggest you take a look under the proverbial hood and fix the wires before a malfunction occurs. The wires are stuffed in a dark corner, tangled and dusty. You'll have to figure out how to fix this by yourself. I trust your instincts. Not that I have a choice. Crew intelligence is brilliant, so we should be able to do that. And we're coming up on something mysterious, so day 12. All right. Nicely done, Captain. You prove yourself smart enough to fix the malfunctioning component. The ship's systems are now working at standard capacity. The ship is really falling apart, I'm afraid. There was not enough time to properly finish it. Who could have expected an atomic apocalypse to break out so suddenly? Well, I could, but no one listened to me. No one ever listens to computerized assistance. Oh well, that's life, I guess. Just ones and zeros, but mostly zeros. Planet or no planet, whatever we were flying to is getting closer. ETA T-1. Hey, and we got soup. Everybody's not super hungry, so that's good. Why is she looking at me so pissed? We are experiencing minor technical difficulties with the communications console. In other words, we're completely deaf and blind. I cannot pinpoint the origin of this malfunction, but I am registering an intensifying tonal signal, Captain. It's a bomb! Oh, crap. Well, I don't have anything to do it with, so let's see how bad it is. <laughs> Day 13. When you sat down in front of the communications console, which was about to explode, it <laughs> just folded your arms. My processor froze for a second. That was highly illogical. Suicidal, even. And yet, we're still here. How did you know it was not going to blow up, Captain? Ah, Tom just knew, man. Tom, Tom, look at that face. Tom knew. April's still complaining about the lack of rations. Baby's still hungry. Emma keeps complaining for soup. And we made soup. So, everybody chill out on soup. Sir, something huge has cropped up my scanners. A dark, squirrely, squirrely, swirly sky planet is directly in our path. It's covered in a giant storm. Beneath the dark swirls, scanners detect a hazy, indistinct heat signatures. No, we're not going to land there. No, we're going somewhere new. Not landing there. Keep on moving. Day 14. Captain, the planet we passed yesterday is now barely visible against the dark canvas of space. Conditions on the surface were a bit questionable, so I can see why you chose not to risk a crash landing. Our resources won't last forever. It would be wise to land somewhere before things get nasty in the shuttle cabin. I will let you know as soon as I clock a viable landing spot. Wish I knew where we were pulling those spare soup cans from, Captain. Hell yeah, he just keeps making soup. Right. Recycle. What can we recycle? What, what, what does soup cost? Chemicals? We need chemicals for soup? Yeah. What can we recycle that has chemicals? Anything? Anything that I want to recycle? No. Not anything I want to recycle. Alright. 
We're receiving a signal from deep space. It seems to be a pulsar, except its pulse isn't like anything I've ever seen before. Pulsars are neutron stars with extremely fast rotation. They emit beams of EM radiation, that's electromagnetic radiation, that can appear to be intelligent in origin. But this one is, is intelligent in origin. Do you want to decode the message? Uh, yeah, smart guy Emmett. Let's decode that bad boy. Day 15. Emmett rushed to decode the Pulsar's message. It was an advertisement. Don't miss Zizak Sports Emporium. Voted best in the universe. Free gun giveaway going to, uh, go, still going on. Turn left on the Super Strand and 462 Parsecs. Muting this ad may lead to death. After the message played, a gun materialized next to Emmett. Yay, free stuff. <laughs> all right. Everybody's doing all right. Everyone's starving, though, so we got to give everybody food. And I think I'm going to end that one here for the day, guys. If you did like this one, be sure to like, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We're going to find another planet to land on. Maybe it'll be Mootopia. We got some unfinished business there. Maybe it'll be another planet. Who knows? But it's not going to be Phobonos. So I hope you guys like this one. And I'll see you next time. Bye.